Hello, I hope you're doing well. Let me write hello on the screen. Anyways, let me erase this. Um, yeah, so this is another Design With Me video and it is for the Icy Wonderland mini kit that is coming to the shop this Saturday. And this is a fourth and final installment of our biome series. So we had the ocean biome, the desert stroll, and then we had, where is it? This is a out of the woods kit. I also did a design with me on, on this. And then now in this video, I will be showing you the process of this one, which is like the Arctic Tundra um, kit. But um, instead of doing like an Arctic Tundra, it was way too restrictive of a theme for me. So I just dropped that and made it like a, just basically an icy theme. Um, and yeah, this is a little bit different because I'm going to be answering Q&A questions that you guys submitted. So I hope you enjoy this design with me and Q&A. All right, so we're going to get started with the Q&A and I have like 60 something questions here. So I will probably have to record this over multiple sessions. I'm also just paraphrasing the questions, but I will put the original question on the screen so you can reference it. So, um, the first question is, living a busy life poses challenges to my social life, so how do I make time for friends and am I dating? I think a lot of you can tell from my videos that I am rather reserved, so actually um, I feel like my business helps with my social life. I wouldn't really push myself to talk with as many people if it weren't for the fact that I am I guess considered a businesswoman, but I'm assuming this person is asking more so about like, for example, my school friends. Um, and yeah, I, I don't have a very large social circle in real life. Um, I do have several quality friends who I cherish very much and I've known for many years. I think with those kind of friends, um, there's sort of this mutual understanding that I am not always available to um, go on day trips or anything like that. And um, also on their end, they're also very busy. So I think we just have this mutual understanding that um, just because we don't uh, hang out as often or talk every single day, uh, it doesn't really necessarily reflect on the quality of a relationship. But on the occasions that I do meet up with friends, I, I ensure that I don't bring my work with me and that um, we spend quality time together. And as for the question of am I dating, I, I actually am. I don't think I've really explicitly mentioned this on YouTube, but um, I've been in a relationship for a year and a half, I think. Uh, we don't really have an anniversary date. Uh, we'll just say a year and a half. He's also a very private person. Um, he doesn't have any social medias apart from, I think, a YouTube account, which he watches videos on. But yeah, that is that. What is my favorite bread item? This is a very important question. Um, I would say my favorite bread item is focaccia. Specifically, I think it's called focaccia rosa. Um, it has like uh, tomatoes on it and thyme and it's so, 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 so good. Okay, moving on. What made me want to stick to the typical path of going to university rather than focusing on my business right out of high school? I, I think I need to take a minute to think about this one. Okay, I'm back. I noted down all of these questions, but I haven't really thought of any answers, so I might have to cut off the narration to think about things. But um, I think there are a few reasons. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is that uh, I, I simply just love learning, so it wasn't really like a forced thing for me. But um, a more deeper reason would probably be the fact that uh, part of the reason why I started or why I turned the Coffee Masters Co. into a business was the fact that I wasn't sure how our family would pay for um, university tuition. I did have a few scholarships, but it wasn't like a full ride scholarship. So I was, yeah, I was very concerned about that. And so I started the Coffee Masters Co. in grade 10. And by the time it was grade 12, when I was... Um, getting ready to graduate, I was two years into this business and it was pretty evident to me already that the Coffee Monsters Co. would be a very big part of my life and my career. 
and so even at the time I had a lot of people around me, um, my family and friends and uh, people on the internet asking me why I was even bothering stressing myself out with university applications and I just thought if I started the Coffee Monsters Co partially with the intent of paying for my own university tuition then it would have been a great disservice to myself if I just never ended up going to university so I think that was a more deeper reason that I actually never really shared until now and I do understand I you know I, I took economics so <laughs> there's the opportunity cost where um, since I went to university, I forfeited a lot of my potential um, in terms of business and revenues because I um, always put school first before, you know, working on my business. So yes, there was a lot of forfeited things, I guess. But um, if I had the chance to go back, I would have made the same choices because I felt like university, I think, is a really important uh, at least for me, character building chapter. Um, it helped me work on my discipline. Um, it helped me work through very difficult and stressful times. And obviously you can gain all of this experience from other things outside of university. But for me, I got all of this out of university. So yeah, I, I felt like it was a very worthwhile experience. And yeah, I, I'm rambling too much, but I, I do not regret my choices at all. And that is why I decided to go to university. Okay, how do I choose colors? What other kinds of art do I do? And recommendations for people who want to get back into drawing as adults. Um, as for the colors, I'm guessing they're talking more about kits and for the kits, I'm honestly very much inspired by nature. I also go through these like uh, phases where I just am drawn to certain things. Um, for example, currently I'm really into cozy colors, which is why I did the cozy Halloween kit and I have I don't know if I can share this, but I have a cozy Christmas thing coming up and yeah, um, it's largely based on how I feel and my environment. Um, for example, like if you were to just give me a random color palette, even if it's super pretty from Pinterest, I likely would not be able to be inspired by it because it just doesn't really come to me naturally. Um, as for the other kinds of art that I do, fun fact, before I started the Coffee Monsters Co, I was um, very much into watercolor painting and doing uh, landscapes and currently I'm also working on in, an oil painting landscape so it's very different from the kind of cartoonish artwork that I do I find that um, a lot of it actually crosses over like studies of color and light when I do my paintings actually really help with my uh, designing as well and that is why I design a lot of nature things evidently as you can see from the video and as for my recommendations for people who want to get back into drawing as adults, um, apart from the usual tips of, you know, practicing, I would say to find a resource that really uh, inspires you and makes you motivated. This can look like going to your local bookstore and finding an art book on something that you're interested in, like for example, uh, watercolor art book and you can follow along or you can find maybe like a youtube channel that gives instructional videos um yeah i find that having some sort of reference or uh, some sort of resource really helps what do i think about creating a vintage line how do i find time for self-care and tips for work-life balance Okay, so regarding the vintage line, I think that is a great idea. I think there are a lot of interesting things I can do with that. So thank you for the suggestion. Um, as for self-care and work-life balance, I think if you watch my channel for long enough, you know that I am definitely not the model person to be answering this question. But um, there are a few things that I'm actively trying to do lately. For example, I realize that um, I am more inclined to do self-care items if I block off a very long time for it. So what I mean by this is instead of, for example, saying that I will uh, read for one hour every night before bed, this just doesn't really work for me because I get very anxious if I'm not really working. Like it takes me a good 30 minutes to get out of my work mode. And so if I'm just like reading for an hour every night, 
half of those minutes are just me being anxious and I'm not actually reading. So what I find more useful is, for example, saying that, you know, two to three times a week, I will read for three hours before bed. And yeah, like maybe for the first half an hour of those three hours, I will be a little bit anxious. But then for the remaining two and a half hours, I will be really into the book that I'm reading. So this is a little tip that I have realized has helped me lately, and I've been trying to implement it more into my own life. Okay, next question. How am I doing mentally? Thank you so much for asking. Um, a lot of people asked me how I am doing, and it honestly just... I, I don't know why people care about me, to be honest. Like, it, it really made me happy, so thank you for that. If you ask me this question during different times of the year or the month or the week or even during the day, I probably have a different answer. So what I typically say is I'm doing as okay as I can be. Basically, even if I'm not doing so well mentally, um, I am trying my best, so that is me doing as okay as I can be. Hopefully that made sense. Um, next question, would I ever consider having a fan meetup either in person or uh, through Zoom? Um, I'm not sure. So actually I've been talking with Sydney who also lives in BC. She's another business owner, Planner Monkey Co. And um, she proposed the idea of doing a little planner meetup just in Surrey, BC or maybe Vancouver where maybe we will you know pay from some coffees and pastries and stuff and then just have a really chill meetup that's something that I kind of can get behind because you know Sydney's there she is another business owner and she can help with all of that um, by myself I probably wouldn't just because uh, I, I'm honestly not a very charismatic person. I have met up with some customers one-on-one uh, -on -one before and I honestly feel so bad because I, I'm i just not charismatic and so I try to make the other person feel comfortable in my presence but I feel like when I do that, I come off as um, not very genuine, I don't know. I'm again very reserved so I don't have a lot of social practice and so I tend to be very socially awkward and I can't imagine entertaining an entire group of people if that makes any sense. Um, so I will see. I think um, I will message Sydney later because I would feel so much more comfortable if it was with another shop owner who um, I've actually met before so yeah, I will keep you updated. Have I ever thought about doing digital stickers uh, for for digital planners? Um, I get this question actually like two to three times a week and I honestly feel so bad every time I answer because it is a very definite no um, just because I, um, as, as the artist behind the things that I do, I put in a lot of time and effort and very cheesily my love <laughs> into my designs and so it just puts a really daunting feeling in my chest just thinking of the idea that my artwork is being shared or distributed digitally without any restriction so yeah um i i would i won't be making digital stickers anytime soon um sometimes i do make digital things specifically for it to be digital so we have like a few dozen free digital printables in our facebook group and i also have some digital things um, for sale in my shop and every year for cyber monday just because of the whole cyber aspect i always release some digitals on cyber monday so yeah that's actually coming up in about a month so you can check the shop if you're interested in more digital items how is my move back to Vancouver? Um, the move itself was very stressful. I packed up four years of my life and um, moved everything back myself. As for settling into Vancouver, it is very lovely. I, yeah, I love it here. I love both Vancouver and Toronto. I don't know which one I like better, so yeah, we'll see. Okay, since I use multiple planners, do I ever feel like what I write becomes repetitive and how do I overcome that? Um, I actually do not have this feeling. I sometimes do rewrite the same thing in my planners, but um, I typically rewrite them with intention. Like for example, I might have a general to-do list and then I realize that 
uh, things are getting a little bit hectic with work and I'm you know, having trouble getting organized with what I have to design. So then I will create a separate to-do list for all of the things that I have to design. So even if I'm, you know, rewriting certain things, it's because I just want to reorganize my thoughts. So I'm not um, rewriting just for the sake of rewriting. Um, but if you do have this feeling, I would say, you know, it's very likely that you don't have, for example, two Hobonichi cousins and you're just copying over everything you're writing from one Hobonichi cousin into the other Hobonichi cousin. Um, I'm guessing all of your planners are pretty distinct and different. So, you know, think of it that way. You're, you might be writing the same thing, but it's on a different medium. So it's not exactly the same. I don't know if this really helps, but yeah, I, I typically don't really get this feeling. Um, what are my postgraduate plans? Do I have any pets? And where do I see my shop going in the future? What are my postgraduate plans? Um, currently, my plan is to work on TCMC full time for one to two years. Um, again, I started the Coffee Monsters Co. in grade 10 of high school. And after graduating high school, I jumped straight into um, university. And so for the past six ish years, I have not had any chances of working on the Coffee Monsters Co. full time. So yeah, I want to give myself one to two years to reorganize certain things and just like, I don't know, get things sorted. And then after that, I would like to apply to a master's or PhD program uh, in economics. Likely a master's because I don't think I have a sufficient undergraduate research experience in economics. I, I think I just have one research experience in economics. So I don't think that's sufficient for a direct entry uh, PhD. So I will likely apply for a master's first. Um, as for the pets question, I have always, always wanted a dog. And I think I've mentioned that I wanted to get a dog as soon as I graduate from university. However, I have decided against that because I'm still very closely tied with the Coffee Monsters Co. And I'm very worried that um, there are customers who are allergic to pets. So I don't want to accidentally contaminate an order. I know this is like the smallest detail to think about, but I don't know. It, I'm very paranoid about that. So I think until I for some reason i'm no longer packing orders at tcmc i will not be getting a dog but that is also flawed because i never ever want to stop packing orders for my business so i don't know i yeah i don't <laughs> i don't know what's gonna happen but yeah for now i i likely won't be getting a dog just for the reasons of um possible allergies okay um where do i see my shop going in the future um I had to think about that for a little bit. Um, products wise, I want to definitely sell stationery forever. I love stationery and I will never deviate away from it. Um, but for some bigger dreams, I would like to eventually do apparel, um, but like not the ones where you just iron things on. Like I, I want to do some meaningful apparel that's like sustainable and that are actually, you know, wearable on a daily basis. Um, maybe like with touches of emojis and doodles still, but it's not like a jarring thing, if that makes any sense. I also really want to do like home decor, uh, things like mugs, ornaments, um, I don't know, vases. I just randomly thought of that. I don't know who would want to buy a vase from me, but yeah, like home decor, I think that'll be fun as well. But at the end of the day, I have no intentions of uh, growing my business to be so big that I'm no longer personally involved. Um, that's just not very fulfilling to me. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I obviously want to grow my customer, ba customer base and reach more people, but I don't want to overdo it, if that makes any sense. What is one thing I wish I did differently with the Coffee Monsters Co. since the beginning? And what is one thing I felt I've done or focused on in the beginning that I've kept up with that has had a hand in success? Phew, okay. <laughs> this is a really good question though. Okay, I had to take a few minutes to think about this. I think what I regret most is I wish I had more confidence in my business and invested more in my products and such. Uh, I feel like I forfeited a lot of 
fun things that I could have done and that I think would have been successes, but just because it required uh, that initial investment, I just couldn't stomach it. Now, there is a reason behind that, um, and it's because I, I grew up in a low-income family, so just the idea of like spending $100 on something was a very, very big deal to me, even if it was related to business. So yeah, um, I think psychologically, I understand where I was coming from, even though what I like my decisions weren't very rational. Okay, and then what is one thing I've done or focused on in the beginning that I kept up with that has had a hand in my success? Okay, I, I was thinking about this for quite a long time actually, and I think I always come to, back to the same thing, which is that I never lost my love for planning. Um, I started my Instagram account because I loved bullet journaling and planning, and I think if you go back to my content from five years ago or six years ago or seven years ago, you'll notice that apart from the way I take my photos, my content is largely the same. And it's because I truly just love planning. And I think even for customers who might not be so detail oriented and uh, pay attention to everything about a product that they're buying, I think generally you can feel when a business really cares about the products that they're putting out and that is the case for me. I honestly really only release items that I personally would use in my own planners and because of that I do actually use my products in my own planners and I show it off and um, that leads to people actually seeing that I'm not just pushing sales but rather I'm truly enjoying the things that I'm putting out if that makes any sense. So yeah I think uh, the, the main thing is that I always stay true to the fact that I love planning and I will always just make products that I enjoy for my own planner and it seems like other people happen to like them as well. I'm going to answer one more question before I take a break because I'm getting kind of tired. Um, did I ever Im uh, imagine, envision I'd get to the place I am now? Um, do I ever plan on owning my own physical shop? Ooh, I like this one. Okay, no, I definitely never envisioned that I would be working on the Coffee Monsters Co. to this scale. It's incredibly surreal to me every single day, and I. Th this is also part of the reason why I um, make it a point to always ensure that I'm connected to my customers, either through Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Um, because I know I am a very, very lucky person. I, you know, obviously um, part of it is the products that I put out and my artwork, but there are so many talented and more talented artists out there. And so I know that I'm in a very, very lucky situation to be able to do what I do. And so I always remind myself that, you know, as quickly as this all came, it can go away just as quickly. So yeah, um, it's a surreal thing to me every single day. That is why I have to remind myself not to take things for granted and you know always try my best. And um, as for owning a physical shop, I actually have a very grand long-term dream about this. I would love to own a physical shop. Um, however, my vision is for like a cafe place where you can come in and plan and journal and maybe we'll like provide some supplies and you can sip on coffee and eat pastries. I don't know. I, that is a very long-term thing and I definitely cannot do that now, but I would love to embark on that maybe maybe when I retire or something. <laughs> what is my 2023... Oh wait, I said I would take a break. Okay, let me just answer this one. What is my 2023 planner lineup? Okay, so I will be using the same thing except for um, adding a Hobonichi Weeks. So I will be using my Hobonichi Cousin as my everything planner, just like this year. I will be using my Loistrum Pocket Bullet Journal, um, my Modi Planner as my work to-do list, and my Traveler's Notebook as my confidential business planner. Um, this one I don't really use often, but it has a lot of important information. And then I will be adding my Hobonichi Weeks, just a regular one. Um, I didn't get the Mega. Okay, I am back. Um, what are my favorite Taylor Swift songs from each album? This is also a very good question. Um, I am going to 
put them on the screen because I need to think about each one. Okay, the next question is how do I manage to dedicate time to filling in my Hobonichi cousin while living a very busy life? One thing that really helps me is starting my spread just a little bit the night before and that can be simply writing down the words to do on your page and that is all or you can even like start off your to-do list a little bit just so that when you wake up the next morning and you're ready to start planning the day it's not like a fully blank page that is kind of daunting i do find that if it's a fully blank page and perhaps in the morning i'm really busy and i don't really have time to writing my to-do list and then by the time it's the afternoon, it's still a blank page. I just kind of mentally give up on it. So I feel like um, what's really helped me this year with keeping up with my planner is starting my spread just a little bit the night before. And as for during the day, I open my planner several times to check off my to-do list. But as for the doodling and the diary entries, I tend to do so during my breaks. So for example, um, around the time I eat breakfast and around the time I eat lunch and then right after dinner. What happens if things don't go to plan as the weekly spread? So um, what if something takes up more time than what I had planned for? And how do I like estimate perfectly the amount of time that I need? This is once again a really good question. Um, I do not plan my time from minute to minute. Like for example, if I know I want to design something and from the past like six years of designing all of that experience, I generally know how long something's gonna take. So say there is a design project and I estimate that it'll take around two hours. Um, I don't necessarily block off two hours for designing and then right after I start on going to the gym or something, I don't know. It's more likely that I will block off two and a half to three hours actually for designing to account for the time of setting things up and shutting things down and moving on to the next task. So I think it's very important to kind of um, build in some buffer time. So even if I, you know, happen to take an extra half an hour for designing, it doesn't really affect my day to day schedule because I already kind of have that blocked in. And if something completely changes, it's either a an emergency or b something really exciting that just came up and in those cases i'm totally okay with just crossing things off and using an arrow to make a note to myself that so and so happened the next question is how to overcome anxiety uh, i am once again not the model person to ask for this because i myself am actively struggling with anxiety so you know, obviously, uh, my tips aren't very helpful because if they were helpful, then I wouldn't be dealing with anxiety. Um, but I guess just talking a little bit about my own, own anxiety and what I'm doing now, um, I realized that previously I would kind of distract myself from anxiety. Like whenever I start getting panic attacks, Okay, maybe not while I'm getting panic attacks, but uh, in the aftermath of getting panic attacks or if I just have a really bad anxiety episode, what would help me is distracting myself by designing something or working on something. But then I realized that as the years gone by, I'm kind of just avoiding actually tackling the issue, which is the anxiety. So currently um, with therapy, I recently started therapy, all of that is due to me trying to tackle the actual problem of, of anxiety rather than just distracting myself, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I, I don't really have any tips on overcoming it because I haven't overcome it myself. Overcome it myself? Overcame it? Over... I don't know. How am I doing? Plans on moving to my own home and my order packing space situation because it looks kind of like a the covered in harry potter <laughs> um how am i doing thank you so much again for asking i am doing as well as i can be and i am trying my best every single day as for moving into my own home i am currently in no rush to move out um partially because i am not sure i want to stay in british columbia in the long term and you know getting a home is a uh, 
it's a pretty big deal. So as I mentioned in the answer to the first question of this Q&A, um, I, I am in a relationship and we are long distance, so there is a little bit of instability as to where I might end up settling down. So I, I'm not in a rush to buy a home or anything like that. Um, and also, I, I'm very lucky that I'm very close with both of my parents and living with them is great. We kind of have like a unofficial and unspoken thing where we rotate making lunch and dinner for everyone. So yeah, it's working out really well and I'm very content with where I am and eventually I will be moving out but uh, just not sure when and where. As for the order packing space situation, yes, it looks very very cluttered and that is because um, my dad and I, we built some shelves and basically created an order packing cubicle. Um, it wasn't really my intention to make it into a cubicle but it just happened that way but um, eventually I do want to open up the space a little bit so that everyone is sharing the stock if that makes any sense because currently like every packer has their own set of inventory and so it gets very uh difficult to keep track of what is low and what is sufficiently stocked okay um what are three wonderful things my shop has given me that i did not expect i really like this question okay the first one that i can think of is that my mom no longer has to work on her feet for eight to ten hours every single day and commute two hours to downtown Vancouver and come back. That has been probably my greatest accomplishment so far, um, that she can just work from home. The second thing is that uh, since I was like 10, 11, 12, I've always loved YouTube and I always thought it was really cool to make YouTube videos, so I actually used to have several channels, one where I was uploading honestly really bad drawing time lapses. Um, I also at one point wanted to start a beauty channel um, that was, oh my goodness, embarrassing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it is so cool now that I literally just chatter on about stationery and things that I'm interested in and there are people who are also interested in the same thing and we can converse in the comments and all as well. Obviously like my production quality isn't really great, I'm not a very talented filmmaker by any means, but yeah, I, I'm very thankful for this platform that I have where I can just talk about things that I like. As for my third thing, it would probably be the fact that I have um, connected or spoken with people from all around the world. I think it's really incredible that there are people interested in planners who I have spoken with and shipped orders to um, just in my hometown and you know in the US and Europe and Africa and Asia and Australia. It's just crazy and I once again I find it to be very surreal. Um, the next question, what are my book recommendations and how do I annotate books? Um, for my book recommendations, I, I have a lot. I might put a few on the screen as well, but um, just off the top of my head, some recent reads that I really enjoyed was um, Killers of the Flower Moon, Crime and Punishment, Brave New World was an excellent read, Fine Balance was a really good read as well, and I'm currently reading The New Jim Crow, which is also wonderfully written, Empire of Pain, that was a really good one as well. Um, but yeah, I will list some more on the screen if I can think of any. As for annotating books, I don't heavily annotate my books. I find it to be a little bit distracting for me, but I do scribble in my books sometimes, and it's typically honestly just definitions of words that I don't know. Um, and sometimes there are certain pieces of information or quotations that strike me. Okay, um, favorite fountain pen and ink combo. This is basically impossible to answer, but I will just tell you my current favorite combo, which is my uh, Pilot Vanishing Point Fine Nib with the Dominant Industry Forest Ink. What do I think about re-releasing my sold out washi tapes? I actually do re-release some of my older washi tapes. We do one big washi pre-order in June every year, and then maybe like five to six other smaller washi releases throughout the year. So I would say like a healthy six washi release or 
six washi drops throughout the year. Um, and typically it does include uh, revamped versions of older washi tapes. The reason why I don't put out the exact same washi tape as I have done or as I have released before is because a lot of my older washi tapes are from like four to five years ago and my art has significantly changed since then and even if my customers like those designs as a designer and an artist i do not feel good about putting out artwork that i don't like so that is why i always have to revamp them a little bit and um yeah okay um best change i have made to my hobonichi cousin compared to how i used it last year this is a good question because in 2021, I used my Hobonichi Cousin consistently, but I definitely had stretches of certain days and weeks even where I had it completely blank. And I feel like um, the biggest change was honestly very cheesy, but a mindset change. I remind myself that, you know, my planner is to serve me functionally and to also make me happy. And so if I'm really busy, I shouldn't force myself to write a to-do list because that hinders my productivity. And if I'm mentally not feeling like I want to write a diary entry or do a bunch of doodles, then I shouldn't force myself to do so. It just ironically happened that as soon as I thought of it that way, I just ended up keeping up with my planner every single day. And I think it's because like in 2021, I had this pressure of myself that I needed to fill out every single day of my planner. And as soon as I had one day where I was just feeling off and I couldn't fill out my planner just physically or mentally, then the next few days I would spiral and I was like, okay, I broke my streak. What is the point of even continuing because I have not met my goal? Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm filming this on a different day and it is very rainy outside, so you might hear some splashing and rain. Hopefully you don't mind. Okay, um, the next question is what are my top three pieces of advice for those who are interested in starting their own sticker shops? And uh, once again, I'm thinking of all of these answers on the spot, so they might not be in the order of importance. Um, so the first thing that I can think of is to uh, like when you're planning, think of what you're missing from your planner and chances are if you feel like there is some sticker that you wish existed, then other people have also wished that particular thing has existed. And if you create that, then it is something unique to you and your shop and people will for sure go to your shop just to get that unique item. My second piece of advice would be to not be afraid to do a bunch of faulty tests. Um, you know, the planner market has been, or planner sticker market has um, been active for, I would say, around a decade now, maybe approaching a decade or a little bit past that. And so there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube and on blogs and such with like what sticker cutters you need, what printers you need, what um sticker papers you need I, I just had a brain fart for a moment and i'm sure like if anyone looks online you will find an entire supplies list you will find step-by-step -step instructions and all of this stuff and i think that is great and you can follow that for a head start and an easy start but also make sure to test things out yourself. If I were someone to start a sticker shop currently, I would probably look online for a guide of some sort as a starting point. And then after that, I would figure everything out myself just because all of the trial and error is actually really useful in you know, figuring out what works for you and the products that you make. And through mistakes, you will actually learn a lot of things that is helpful in perfecting your product. So. Yeah, um, I think utilize all of the resources out there, but also learn things on your own as well. And lastly, I would say it, this is really similar to an earlier um, answer that I provided, but I would stay active in the planner community and actually enjoy planning um, because through planning in your own planner and also participating in the planner community, you will realize what other people want and what other people need and also what you personally want and need for your own planners and then you can create products to cater towards that okay the next question is where do i get the ideas for my kits they tend to be unique thank you so much i think having 
my artwork being called unique is one of the highest compliments to be received so i really appreciate that um i think i also provided a pretty similar answer but a lot of my kit ideas are derived from nature and my environment and i guess the seasons um there are exceptions like for example my pastel galaxy kit i i was not inspired by my surroundings or anything like that but i just felt like i wanted some sort of rainbow kit that is colorful and happy so yeah my kit ideas tend to come from two avenues one are things that i feel like people just need in their planners like for example the gloomy week kit or um a new chapter but otherwise it would be things to do with nature and the seasons uh, i also watch a lot of uh, nature documentaries and just flip through magazines and stuff and just like things like this even if i'm not like intending to find inspiration for kids i feel like over time they kind of just come together and give me these like bursts of inspiration the next question is do i set personal goals like painting in my planners and how am i enjoy how am i enjoying driving okay so for personal goals this is actually where my hobonichi weeks is going to come in for next year um, i don't know if i talked about this earlier but for my hobonichi weeks i plan on making it like a self-development planner and i will definitely update you on that come 2023 but um, currently, I do still set some goals. It's kind of mixed in with work and all of my other stuff, which is why it's not so uh, obvious. Um, but my goals are typically more so to do with uh, things like going to the gym, reading, studying, and mental health. I don't really, honestly, it's kind of sad, but I don't really do any intensive art studies anymore. I used to do so, but it honestly takes up so much of my time and whenever I'm doing like a painting, I think of the fact that I could be designing something for the shop and I'm trying to get out of that mindset. So currently I don't have any goals for painting, but I do hope to do that in 2023. And that is why I got the Hobonichi Weeks. So I tell myself for driving, I really am enjoying it. Uh, I do find that I still cannot park without blind spot mirrors. Um, my dad's car is a rather old car, so it doesn't have like the back camera thing. So when I park now, I only do so by intuition. And since I've been driving for literally like a month, maybe not even, a lot of times my parking is very crooked. So I actually just ordered some blind spot mirrors and that should really help. Okay. Um, how do I come up with new ideas for my planner spreads and do I pre-plan the themes beforehand? As for ideas for my planner spreads, they tend to just be in line with the season and the particular week. If I don't really have any significant things happening, then I will typically just take a look at my washi collection and see whatever washi tape speaks to me and then I will go off the color palette of the washi tape. For the themes, I do not pre-plan but generally like um, I know, for example, I want to use the cozy Halloween kit for Halloween, but otherwise I don't really plan that. Next up, my paraphrasing thing just says about my upbringing, family, and personal life. So I'm guessing this person is asking just about my general upbringing. So I think I touched a little bit about this earlier, but um, a little rundown on my immediate family history. Um, both of my parents are Chinese, they met in China and my dad he moved to japan to start his phd in chemistry eventually my mom joined him in japan and i was born in japan so even though i am chinese i was actually born in japan and i grew up in japan and then when i was around five and a half my mom and my sister and myself we immigrated to canada while my dad stayed behind to work in japan and i think this is pretty common with a lot of um, immigrant families where um, my mom was an educated teacher but um, after moving to canada she I guess either had a language barrier or maybe some license that she couldn't get so um, she couldn't work as a teacher but she ended up working at a fast food restaurant so yeah that was basically my childhood and my teenage years and then fast forward to grade 10 i started the coffee monsters co and somehow we are here so this part of the voiceover is filmed on another day and i got my wisdom tooth pulled several days ago so 
you might notice a little bit of a lisp just because I have swollen cheeks, but um, I need to get this video done, so we're gonna push through. Okay, um, the next question is, what is a time tracker in my weekly section and how did I manage six to eight hours of work while in university? So every week I track the number of hours I work. It's not really out of necessity, I just really like data and seeing the trends and I think it's something fun to do in your planner, so yeah. And as for working while in university, I'm not too sure honestly where the six to eight hours came from. Maybe um, this person was looking at my spreads and that was the general gist that they got. But um, while I was in university, the number of hours that I worked every day varied a lot. Some days I would do like a bare minimum one hour of doing customer service emails and other days I would just like work for 16 hours straight on the business. So yeah, it really depends on the season. Um, like for example, if it's a finals week, then I definitely just do the bare minimum for the shop. And then if it's like a busier business season, then I um, don't put in as much time into schoolwork. However, if it's like a season where it's busy, both in terms of university and business, that is when I sacrifice my sleep and it's definitely not healthy. Um, but yeah, that's the true and honest answer where I prioritize my task based on what is needed and what demands my attention the most. And if everything demands my attention, then I put my sleep on the back burner. If I wasn't a sticker shop owner, what type of shop would I run? Um, I'm assuming saying a stationary shop would be out of the question because I guess like even though I primarily sell stickers, I am technically a stationary shop. So if it has to be completely unrelated to like planners and stuff, I would probably want to do like a secondhand bookstore. I don't know anything about running a bookstore, let alone a secondhand bookstore. I would imagine it's quite difficult and the margins aren't probably very high, but I I really love reading, I love books, and I love the idea of recycling things and like finding hidden treasures and all of that. So yeah, I would I would say a secondhand bookstore. Okay, um, pros and cons of a sticker business, how to start one and how to improve handwriting. Pros of a sticker business, I would say it's very like you have a lot of flexibility um, because you have these machines that can create whatever you want to create. If you suddenly have a sticker idea, then you can just draw the sticker and print it out and cut it all in one day. Whereas like for some other types of businesses, it might take like several weeks or several months before your new product idea can come to um, fruition. So yeah, um, I think that's a pro of a sticker business. And a con would be, uh, I was just talking about margins of a secondhand bookstore, but I, I would say a con of the sticker book. Did I just say sticker book? I got stickers and the secondhand bookstore mixed up. And also I'm currently working on sticker books for my shop. So yeah, that's why I got confused. Anyways, a con of running a sticker shop is that stickers actually have at least from my company um pretty low profit margins i would say like even though it's like a three dollar sheet of stickers um there are things like the time you put in the paper the printer the ink which is incredibly expensive um the machines the blades the mats all of that really adds up and in the end the profit margins aren't very high so um yeah that's what i would say and for how to start one i'm gonna skip that question just because i think i already answered that earlier in the video um and as for how to improve handwriting i also have several videos on my channel and a few free worksheets um on my blog about that but as my number one piece of advice it would be to focus on developing consistency in your handwriting rather than aiming for perfection um like my handwriting is definitely not perfect but i think it gives the illusion that it's rather neat just because my letters are consistent so hopefully that helps 
Um, do I have a routine to get into the mood to design or work like a drink or music or candle? I really like this question as well. Um, honestly, generally, I don't have a routine. Um, behind the scenes of running a business, it's not so glamorous. I know like on YouTube, there's like all of these day in the life videos that are um, like showing all of these routines and stuff but honestly like it, it's incredibly hectic it's really busy um i wake up and i just want to get things done so i don't really have a blown out routine however i there are a few things that i do while designing um that is pretty consistent so if it's something that requires my full attention i will just work in absolute silence and focus on the task at hand um, if I can afford to kind of loosen up a little bit, then I would typically listen to some music. I'm really into classical music. Or if I can um, afford a little bit more uh, focus to be diverted away from designing, I would listen to Taylor Swift because then I can just jam out to the lyrics. Um, and if it's something a bit more thoughtless, I guess, then I would typically split my screen and on one side I would design and on the other side I would watch YouTube or a Netflix show. Um, and typically I always have a cup of coffee and also water because I'm trying to get better at not staining my teeth. How are Mama and Papa Tater adjusting to the growth of TCMC? So um, if you're not aware, Mama and Papa Tater are nicknames for my parents. I think that is so cute. Um, but anyways, I think they are adjusting okay. Um, like honestly, because this question is being asked in November, where it's like one of the busiest times at TCMC, I will say like all of us are very burned out and stressed. But um, yeah, generally I think we're doing okay. I just have to plug my parents a little bit. Like they are the most amazing and hardworking people I've ever met in my life. Like I don't, I don't even understand it. They are very, very humble people. And even though compared to like um, 2015, when we weren't so financially stable, we live pretty much the same. My parents just always taught me that like no matter what, even if I have the money to, for example, replace an item that can be replaced, to always still take care of the item, to fix it if possible, um, you know, don't spend money recklessly, all of that, like that all comes from my parents and they are just amazing. I know this has like nothing to do with the question, but I just felt like um, hyping them up for a little bit. Okay, anyways, um, how do I stay inspired? How do I deal with art block? I definitely deal with art block. I think most artists do. Not even just like visual artists, but like musicians and poets and writers and all of that. And I think with a lot of professional artists, um, which includes all of the professions that I was talking about earlier, um, Unfortunately, I think for most of us, we just have to push through. Like, you can't really just put your job aside. So for me, I don't really have a kind of systematic way of dealing with art block. There are a few things that I do to help get through one. For example, um, I, I do most of my drawing digitally, but if I switch up to, for example, sketching um, with pen and paper, that really loosens me up and kind of um, make the act of designing and drawing a little bit different so that I'm not as like stuck to the same old routine. Um, also, when I'm not going through an art block, I will jot down as many ideas as I can. So when I do go through an art block, I can refer to my ideas list and I'm not like completely stuck. Um, the next question is what editing software do I use for my videos? I use a software called Movavi Video Editor Plus. If I remember correctly, it's a pretty cheap program and yeah, it's nothing fancy. It does everything that I need, so that's just what I use. And how did I get started on YouTube and my original inspiration? I started on YouTube actually way before I started my Instagram and of course before I started my shop. So I think I was... Um, 14 or 15 at the time and I mostly posted my first YouTube video because a lot of people in the bullet journal junkies Facebook group wanted to see 
a flip through and apply with me of my bullet journal at the time and that's how I got started but um, a lot of my first videos are either deleted or privated just because some people in my high school found them and I was very embarrassed so yeah I, I honestly regret that decision but uh, it is what it is what is my favorite animal onesie? hmm I would say probably probably the polar bears I don't really know why, I just really like polar bears um, okay, so then I have some questions from Instagram oh no, sorry, I'm missing a question on YouTube I have a son, almost 16, and he's thinking of starting his own uh, business of selling puzzles do I have any tips? well, I think that is awesome I'm not sure if you're wondering about tips for your son or for you as a parent so as tips for a parent in this situation, I would say give a lot of encouragement to your son but at the same time, as an adult, it is more likely that you are, I guess, more wise and more likely to see where certain things might not be feasible um, that's not always the case of course there are many times where younger people are right of course but just like in general i'm sure as an adult you have seen businesses fail and succeed so you might have better insights as to what sort of things are feasible or infeasible so yeah i would say you know give a lot of encouragement to your son even if some things might be a little bit risky, but um, just be that kind of voice of reason for him as well. Okay, so moving on to some questions from Instagram. What is my morning routine? So once again, as I said earlier, um, it's honestly not that glamorous. I wake up at 6.30 or sometimes 7.30 and I just like wash my face, brush my teeth, then typically I spend half an hour to an hour just doing emails um, and I respond to like all of the quote-unquote easy emails that I don't really need to like follow up with people on or look into very heavily it's typically just like simple questions and then I will have my breakfast and coffee and then typically at around like 9 in the morning, I would head to the gym for about an hour and then after the gym, I will either go to a cafe or I will read or I will go grocery shopping, just something that's not related to work and then basically for the rest of the day, I just work for this past week, I haven't been going to the gym because um, I heard that you're not really supposed to go to the gym after your wisdom teeth extraction because something about like blood flow and like jaws clenching so yeah, I'm gonna take a week off from the gym anyways, next up how do I work with my parents? what are our roles in the family business? Uh, for the first question, I, I'm i not too sure how to answer it I guess on a day-to-day -day basis we, all three of us have very vastly different roles in the business so like during the day, we don't really talk to be honest like we might text each other and like chat in passing but generally we just do our own thing and then generally um at the dinner table and after dinner we will chit chat and catch everyone up about everything ask questions and all of that and discuss any general business matters as for our roles um for me i do 100 percent of the design work i do all of the social media i also do customer service with my assistants sophia and jean and then what else do i do i also pack orders for about an hour every day just to like stay connected to actual orders um that's very very important to me and i also do just like literally anything that anybody needs so for example i will do um, mail drop-offs, I will seal envelopes um, when we do like for example the um, monthly kit bundles, the six month bundles I will bundle everything up, I oversee inventory deliveries all of that, that is me and then as for my mom, she does a lot of order packing she does um, a lot of the sticker cutting and she's also like the general manager, I would say like I didn't really assign her that role but it just became that way and she is just amazing at it like she um, looks at like what stock is low and she will decide what to cut and as for my dad, he does 90% of the shipping things um, he is so much more knowledgeable about shipping than I am and he's just amazing at it um, he also does some of the meal drop-offs and he um, helps me 
overlook inventory deliveries because some boxes are way too heavy for me and uh, again i have to hype up my parents just a little bit um they are incredibly wise and intelligent people and a lot of like big picture business things i always consult them on like if there's a big decision i would never dream of making that decision without consulting my parents because they are just like very knowledgeable and they have very good intuition so yeah i think we all work very well together am i studying the gre to learn more or planning to apply to grad school so i am studying for the gre to with the intent of applying to either a master's or a phd program but very likely a master's just because i don't have sufficient um undergraduate economics research experience for a direct entry i'm guessing i'm probably going to try just for the sake of it but likely my hopes are on master's programs this is a little off topic but the gre very similar to the sats i don't think is a very good measure of intelligence whatsoever or like even how much you know um it's very much like a game to me and it's honestly very boring because the things you learn quote unquote learn are just like how to satisfy the test requirements and it's not really a demonstration of how smart you are or your knowledge so yeah i definitely am not studying the gre to learn more because it's honestly like one of the most boring things i have ever studied for so yeah well i guess i'm currently studying for it okay maybe i'm being a little bit too harsh but i guess i'm currently a little bit frustrated so that's that um how do i set up my camera while filming and i guess my equipment so i think my channel has a little bit over a hundred thousand subscribers and it completely baffles me because i my filming setup is incredibly rudimentary there are four things that i use for my videos one is a um 90 dollar light box from amazon that i got maybe six years ago um, and then I have a tripod that my dad bought from Japan probably over two decades ago, so like 20 years ago. And then I have a camcorder from two decades ago, and it's still working. And sometimes I will just use my phone. So yeah, my <laughs> my filming equipment is like not even worthy to be talked about because it's like the bare minimum. I I probably should have some better equipment by now, but... I'm honestly not a very talented video maker, so um, I, I just work with very basic things. Alright, so I think um, I have covered all of the questions. There might have been a few that came in while I was putting together this like list of questions, so I do apologize if I didn't get to that or if I just like very accidentally missed your question. I genuinely like wrote down every single one and nothing was off limits, so yeah um if i did happen to miss your question please know it's not an issue with your question but i was likely just like in a hurry or something i hope you enjoyed listening to it and learning a little bit more about myself my business my family my wonderful parents um oh i also want to mention i have an older sister and she is an amazing older sister i just don't mention her very often just because she's not very um involved in the business she is a full-time pharmacist a very accomplished one um and yeah she works as a full-time pharmacist and she also doesn't live with us anymore so that is why i just generally don't really mention her too often but yeah she's the best sister ever i just wanted to put that out there because um i don't think i mentioned her in this video at all anyways um I will see you on Sunday for a plan with me actually using this Icy Wonderland kit. So yeah, um, I will talk to you soon. Bye.